You can't be a good Muslim, but a bad person. It doesn't work that way. On the Day of Judgment, Allah is going to divide the testimonies of the people into two. Those that were hurt by you and those that were helped by you. And we're going to break out the way that each of those impacts you uniquely. But that's really the only value of the people as witnesses on the Day of Judgment. As for your personal religiosity, the Ahadith suggests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't bring anyone else to say, I saw that person pray and fast and that person was a good worshiper. Allah knows whether or not that's true of a person. And of course, Allah knows everything. But the value of the testimony of people is, who did you hurt? Who did you help? Now, for the first category, there's something very important to note. On the Day of Judgment, you're either going to meet Allah's justice or His mercy. His justice is that He scrutinizes you for your deeds, like that person whose limbs are brought forth to testify. His mercy is that He overlooks those things and He forgives you. However, when it comes to issues between us and other people, Allah will hold us to a standard of justice only because it would be unjust to not give the wronged person their right and forgive on their behalf. And that's why Imam Sufyan Athori rahimahullah said for you to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with 70 sins just between you and Allah would be easier on you than to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a single sin between you and his servants. The Prophet ﷺ said the first thing concerning which judgment will be passed amongst the people on the Day of Judgment will be bloodshed. Now the scholars reconcile that the first thing between you and Allah called forward is what? It's prayer. But between the people, it's murder. And in one very vivid, authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, يَجِيءُ الْمَقْتُولُ بِالْقَاتِلِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ نَاصِيَتُهُ وَرَأْسُهُ بِيَدِهِ On the Day of Resurrection, I want you to think of the scene. The murdered will bring forth the murderer with his forelock and his head in his hand. And his own jugular vein is dripping with blood and he will say, Ya Rabb, qatalani hatta yudniyahu min al-arsh. And he's coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, My Lord, he killed me. My Lord, he killed me. Until he brings him right up to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, imagine a scene where people are dragging their murderers and their oppressors to the throne of Allah to get justice. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, always be the abd that is mazloom, that is wronged, not the one wronging, that is maqtool, that is murdered, not the one that is qatil, not the one that murders others. And remember how the Prophet ﷺ said that the dua of the mazloom, the dua of the oppressed, has no veil to Allah, even if that person is a non-believer. Now, of course, that person has to deal with their disbelief on the Day of Judgment. But the one who wronged that person is still going to be held to justice. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ ظَلَمَ مُعَاهِدًا Whoever wrongs a person that is protected by a covenant, meaning uh, one of the people of the book, by violating his rights or by burdening him with more work than he is able to do, or by taking something from him without his consent, he said, أَنَا حَجِيجُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ I will be his prosecutor on the Day of Judgment. SubhanAllah, can you imagine the Prophet ﷺ standing against you as a prosecutor on the Day of Judgment on behalf of who? On behalf of a disbeliever, because you still have to face justice for wronging that person. Even more than the Prophet ﷺ being a prosecutor against you, imagine Allah and the Messenger ﷺ being at war with you. And Allah says this about the one who refuses to give up practices of usury, of riba. Be prepared for a war with Allah and His Messenger. Ibn Abbas he says, It would be said to the one who consumes riba on the Day of Judgment, take up your weapons for war. Now riba is not just a crime between you and Allah. Interest and usury bury the poor in debt and perpetuate all sorts of injustices and abuses at the economic level. So this is another form of hurt against people. But beyond violence and theft and proprietary aggression, most of the sins that people commit against each other are by the tongue. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, nothing causes the people to fall face first into the fire, like the harvests of their tongue. The harm your tongue causes to others, we've already spoken about. It's been made clear in your appearance on that day, your situation is known. But now it's going to also be made obvious 
what havoc it wreaks upon one's deeds. We start with the famous hadith of the Prophet where he said, Atadruna man al muflis. Do you know who the bankrupt person is? They said, Ya Rasulullah, the bankrupt person is the one who has no money or no possessions. And he said, No, it's those people amongst my ummah, the one who comes forth on the day of resurrection with their prayer, with their fasting, with their zakah. Imagine a whole lifetime of Laylatul Qadrs and Salah and Sadaqah. But he insulted this person and he slandered this person and he consumed the wealth of this person. He shed the blood of this person and he beat this person. So all of these people are lined up. Those who you hurt with your tongue, with your keyboard or whatever else that you hurt them with. And the Prophet ﷺ said, فَيَقْعُدْ So Allah sits him down. فَيَقْتَصَّ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ And each one of those people comes, starts to take his good deeds away until he is left with no good deeds whatsoever, completely bankrupt. And he says, Ya Rabb, oh my Lord, I've got nothing left. فَأُخِذَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ فَتُرِحَ عَلَيْهِ So then whatever is left of his grievances, the sins of those other people that are still lined up are taken from them and they are cast onto him. And eventually the Prophet said, he'll be cast into the fire. Sa'id ibn Jubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, that a servant will be brought forth on the day of resurrection and presented with his record. And he doesn't see any of his salah, none of his fasting, none of his good deeds. And he says, Ya Rabb, هذا كتاب غيري. Oh my Lord, this has to be someone else's book because I had all these good deeds and I don't see them here. And Allah will say to him, Verily, your Lord does not overlook or forget. Your deeds have vanished because of your ghiba, because you were backbiting people. So be careful with the honor of people. Be careful with the news that you read and spread, with the funny comments and the gossip. It won't be funny on the day of judgment. Now there's the other side of this. What if you're one of the people standing in line on the day of judgment? And there will be people on the day of judgment going from line to line, just collecting their good deeds because of what they endured from others. Abu Umama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Inna al-abda la yu'ata kitabahu yawm al-qiyama fayara fihi hasanat lam yakun amilaha that verily the servant is given his record on the day of judgment. This is the other side. And he sees all these good deeds that he has not done. So he says, Ya Rabb, min ayna li hadha? Oh my Lord, where did all these come from? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, because of the backbiting of people against you, wa anta la tashur, and you had no idea that they were backbiting you. So imagine that on the day of judgment, you're saying, Phew, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, all that was said about me. Alhamdulillah, this person backbited me. I'm glad they were talking about me because it's all showing up on your book of deeds that day. Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi, rahimahullah, he said, you know, if I didn't hate that Allah would be disobeyed, I would have wished that there is not a single person left in the whole city except that he backbited me. And he said, what could possibly be sweeter than a man finding a good deed written in his book on the day of judgment that he didn't do and he didn't even know about? And if that's the mercy of Allah to you for deeds of hurt that were done against you by others, imagine the bounty of Allah for deeds you did to help other people when they were in need.